I can finally say good morning because I'm here before the afternoon. Good morning. As you can hear, there's already a lot going on at the shop. Cody said he might be working on some carbon bits, so let's see what he's doing. At the moment, I'm looking for scissors. <laughs> yeah, at the moment, he's looking for scissors. What? Oh, so this must be what you're working on for carbon stuff. Uh huh. Yeah, so it's the lower, the lower nose cone. I'm getting this done, so I can kind of finish fitting that and see where things are going to fit. So car, car one was such a conglomerate of different things. We had no CAD for the chassis, all that stuff. But we do now, so I know that I know it'll actually fit. Um, it's gonna work! <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Famous last words. So, what I'm doing here is um, doing some loose tooling. So that way we can build a lip as a part of the infusion to where the lower nose cone comes here. Okay. And then there'll be a lip that goes up inside here so we can fasten the nose cone to the lower cone. Okay, so- This needs to come off to check brake fluids to do all that. Uh, if we gotta do anything with the wing, we gotta be able to pull this off. So we'll do like some quarter turn fasteners. Yeah, kind of do it quickly or so be last, able to do it quickly. Like the last time I had to rivet a piece of carbon on the end, it was just nasty. So I'm trying to make you know a little bit of effort now to make it nicer. And there we are. Sweet. So what have you, I mean, I know you've already gotten a lot done before I got here. What'd you have to do to kind of work with it a little bit? Uh, I'm just kind of just cut some aluminum, bent it so where it's slightly inboard and just using tape to stick it down. Say what? Oh yeah, there you can. So that way a little bit of a whip on the inside. I mean, that the nose cone isn't thick. It's, I don't know, 30,000 stick or so, so it's pretty thin. But, yeah, just a little bit at a time. Yeah. All right, well, again, I don't really like to bother him so much when he's in the zone, so I'll let you get to it. Maybe the we'll check. zone. Yeah, the zone. I'll let you uh, get to it. We'll maybe check in on the guys in a little bit and uh, enjoy the montage. Looks like he's getting something ready. What are you doing? So I've always traditionally used um, PVA for mold release, but um, this is actual free coat, ah. free, free coat system. So this is chemical instead of a wax. So you wipe it on and then you wipe it off and then it's a mold release. Oh. So the problem with PVA is if you if you're setting carbon in there and you glue it down, you go to, and you gotta adjust it. You peel it up and you screw up your whole thing. Gotcha. So this will let us do some complex shapes, try to fix the weave, and go from there. Gotcha. All right. Well, I know because you. I think did you already say that this is like the first time? I've used it before, um, something similar over at Palatov, but I've never done it in house, and all of our pre-prag that we're going to be switching to uh, will require this. So okay. Might as well like learn how to do it on my own stuff. Yep, yeah, get a get a good start to it. Sweet. All right, well, I'll let you get to it. And then this, we wipe on, do four or five coats. After that's dried, is this dried? Yeah, that's right. And this smells like fish, not even kidding. Oh yeah, it does, wow. Isn't that weird? So you wipe this on, anywhere you don't want the carbon to stick. Otherwise I'll just f*** onto it. Gotcha. I do 
not want to glue the thing together in that. And this has five to six coats, so as it starts to dry, I just add another coat. Well, it seems like it's drying fairly quickly, too, so it's not like you have to wait yeah. a whole bunch of time. That's what's nice about that, too. PVA, you get, I mean, you're going to wait three hours. So this will probably be a game changer for me. Just in general, you can get parts done much sooner. We just got a freezer uh, and this, this pre-preg project coming up. Um, I need to order minimum quantities to even get the stuff, to get the pre-preg. So I bought the freezer so we can store it. Um, the autoclave isn't done for pressure yet, but I thought about using it as an oven and setting up my thermal stuff, getting the heaters to work. Mm -hmm. So my, there might be a, pretty much the rest of the parts, for the NV at least, used in that to kind of dial in the oven, make sure it works. And then I can finish welding and get her ready to go. I know it kind of, I mean, it's a, it's a good kink in your plans, but it kind of really threw a kink in your plans to get the, <laughs> the sponsorship ready to, you know, make sure the yeah. autoclave could be finished. Yep. So. That'll be kind of waiting on some things. Um, Sweet Manufacturing did jump in on the NV8, so I also ordered a rack for Repu. So I'm gonna wait to get that, install that. When that gets here, then the Repu can go into storage. And then when that happens, I have the lift open, I can finish welding the autoclave. It's gonna kind of go from there. So. But we're still a solid month out at least before we get any of the molds actually cut. So yeah. Still have some time, but it'd be nice to actually have the auto clear. So the good news is this is a pretty easy part to pop. Funny, it's actually a two-piece mold. You see the seam down the middle? Yeah. Because there is a little bit of draft angle right here. If you get down a film, you'll see it comes up. But the, the last time I did this, uh, well, the only part I made at card one, mm -hmm. I was pulling on the PVA and it uh, popped out this way. So, not pulling, pulling on the peel ply. And it just popped out. I was like, oh, that was good. Oh. Popped, popped right out. So, it didn't need to be a two piece mold. So, this tape and the marker line is there in order to have untreated mold. So, the bag tape will not stick to the mold after it's been uh, prepped with pre coat. So I used a marker to mark where this tape was, and I now stick the white tape on. Someone's on the phone. Yeah, so I've mentioned before in other posts, this car has been designed overseas over Facebook Messenger. <laughs> Hold on, so, yes, but there it is. Chatting with uh, you can, chatting with Seb right now. You gonna look at the founder now? Just chatting with Seb right now about some stuff. If it'll like focus enough to see. So <laughs> him and I are discussing. So car one had a blown diffuser with twin turbos, and car two I'm trying to do single turbo, but that mm -hmm. means we lose the blown diffuser because the exhaust is gonna blow out the back of the car. Yeah. And so we're just kind of discussing the gains and losses and um, versus weight of a twin turbo versus blown. Gotcha. So in this case, uh, it was about, the blown diffuser added about 2.4%. Whereas before, yeah, so good things, good things. Um, anyway, so that's what my days consist of. If like I'm on my phone, it's usually with one of the team members freaking trying to design a car from Switzerland. Yeah. He's ready. Had to move some things around. Like I've said before, everything's on wheels in here for a reason. Yeah. Oh, put a big old run in it right off the bat. I'm not uh, filming this channel for perfection to showcase what it takes to actually build a car like this. Thank you. 
right guys as you know i mean carbon fiber work like it's a pretty lengthy process it's pretty tedious stuff so i'm gonna keep working on the videos while he's doing that so if you see a time lapse of everything kind of going together that's what that is so we'll let him get to it and we'll check in in a little bit so what happened was i got too excited i have an eye and I was like, what's going on? I just picked up the GoPro and started talking randomly. Uh, I got too excited and forgot to film everything. So I've since cooked this, which it's been a couple of hours. You can see the, the nice line of offset I did. Oh, I'm excited. So I'm gonna peel this thing out now. Uh, it's only been a couple hours, but it's all it takes when you throw a bunch of heat at it. Yeah, I'll do a time lapse of that. All right. So the new, uh, new mold release works well. And the flange seems to have worked well. Cool little seam there, which we can sand off at some point. Grab the nose cone. All right. So the new, uh, new mold release works well. And the flange seems to have worked well. Cool little seam there, which we can sand off at some point. Grab the nose cone. <laughs> Hold it right there. So I gotta do a little bit of trimming yet, but look at that seam. Gotta sand that down a little bit, obviously, but I'm pretty darn pumped with that. Slide top back a little more, a little bit. It's kind of locked in, isn't it? Yeah. Look at that. It's a big old freaking plague mask. Love it when a plan works. Well, that worked. On to the next part. Sweet. That's how it fits. It's good. Uh, there's some debate on where the bottom of this is going to be, but the good news is, is that. Uh, the last car, I actually had to split this open because the chassis was too tall. Made this chassis a little bit narrower up top, a little bit shorter up top. So we've got ample room. Um, I may have preemptively cut this. We'll kind of find out later. I'm not gonna cut any more until we get more of the body done. So worst case, I'll just have to do a little bit of a filler. Basically, I'm gonna have to cut down into this and slide this up. So I will have a little hole there, so. Oops, do a little carbon patch, it'll be fine. 